Um, can you now, now that it's all over, kind of give us the the depth of the the injury that you've suffered? How bad is it? Uh, you know, it's, uh what was reported was correct. It's a partial tear and a tendonous. I don't know the name of the tendon, but it's coming out of my elbow. Um, and unfortunately, you use a lot to shoot. So when I'm shooting, I'm having a lot of pain. Is that something you're going to need surgically corrected? That's something that I'm going to consider now. Malcolm, obviously you guys almost made history. Uh, what was the difference tonight and how frustrating, disappointing was this evening for you guys where you just seemingly couldn't shoot shoot well starting from start to finish? Yeah, you know, I thought I thought we were tight. I thought we played tight. Um, and it, you know, when you play th that way, it makes you hesitant on both ends of the ball. Um, and I thought Miami played the opposite. I play, thought they played loose. Uh, I thought they really executed on the defensive end. Um, and then offensively, man, they were poised. Uh, they, they, they weren't rushed. They weren't nervous. Um, and I thought Jimmy did what he, what he was supposed to do for him and lead him. Malcolm, you guys went down to that hole early in the series. You talked about how this team has lost its defensive identity and how this used to be a team with a defensive identity. And you guys haven't really found that identity all year. And so you make the comeback off your defense. Then tonight, you're hurt. JT's hurt. You guys can't really seem to run consistent half-court offense. You can't get stops. So what? why do you think that identity, like, once again kind of vanished? And how big of an issue was that for this team this year? It, it, it was the issue. Um, you know, I think it, this was a team in last year that uh, – prided themselves on defense. I think defense was their calling card. And this year, offense was our calling card. And I don't think you win championships, you know, uh, with a higher, with a better def with a better offense than you have a defense. Um, you know, I think pretty much we were the best offensive team in the league, for sure. Depth, you can talk about the ways we can, store, we can score our versatility on offense, um, really one through seven, one through eight. Um, but defensively, I thought we have the versatility. I thought we have um, the talent defensively, but, uh, you know, on any given night, we would just, you know, let go of the rope and, and have a lot of uh, breakdowns on that end. And then you guys were so focused on trying to create transition threes and find cross matches. So when you guys weren't getting in transition, you have the stagnation like you have tonight. What are the things you guys could have done from, like, you know, running more plays or just having more coherent idea of what you wanted to get to that could have made that problem better? Uh, you know, we talk all the time about ball movement um, and player movement and uh, sort of having a free-flowing offense and trusting each other. And uh, when we're not playing well offensively and shots aren't falling, um, I think we lose trust. I think that's how the game works. But um, I think we lose trust, and it, and it shows. And then we have more breakdowns on defense because we're not making shots, because we stop moving the ball. Um, then defensively, it shows as well. Malcolm, do you guys need to, to diversify your, your, your offense? Is the team? too reliant on the three-point shot. The last two, you guys gutted out a win in six when you guys didn't have the three. But tonight, once it didn't go down, heads dropped, you're, you couldn't score. Does, do you guys need to diversify? Uh, you know, I think that's something we'll look at in the offseason. Um, that's, that's definitely a, a Joe question. Um, but for us, I think, we can, I think we can be better. I think we can, I think defensively is where the difference is for us more than anything. Um, whether or not you make shots. That was a game, whether or not we made shots, if we got stops, we could stay in that game. That's not a team that's going to score 120 points. It's not a team that's going to get out in transition and beat you that way. Um, they're going to slow the game down and play in, in, in the half court. So if we can get stops, that's a game we can stay in even if we're not making shots. Um, but the fact of the matter is we didn't get stops. So that, that you know ultimately was, was the death of us. Malcolm, as you reflect on this series, is there frustration with game seven? Do you think back about the first three games? Kind of what's your, your upshot you know, in the moment? What do you mean upshot? Well, do you, do you get frustrated you got into this position and had to, given what happened in the first three games, or more frustrated with the outcome, obviously fresh here in game seven? Uh, yeah, it, you know, it's all around frustrating. Um, the, the hole we put ourselves in, it's hard. No one's climbed out of that hole. Um, you know, and, and it was the same tonight. We couldn't climb out of the hole we created. I thought we showed how resilient we were, how good of a team we actually are, climbing out of it partially. Um, but not being able to finish it on your home floor, that's super disappointing. Um, and then getting beat in the way we got beat, um, they handled us tonight. So, um, you know, that's, that's definitely disappointing. Yeah, along those lines, I mean, coming into the playoffs, you told us you felt the best physically that you have going into a postseason. How disappointing is it that 
it had to end this way with you feeling the way you do? Yeah, uh, super disappointing. You know, I, I, I came here to, to win a championship, to, to help this team as much as I could. Um, I thought we had a great season. Um, after the season we had, uh, it's definitely uh, crushing. Um, and for me personally, you know, I, I, I did feel, I do feel great. My body feels great. I just have this tear in my, in, in my arm, um, which is unfortunate, but it's part of the game. And, uh, you know, I tried to battle through it. JT tried to battle through a, uh, you know, a sprained ankle literally on the first play of the game. So, um, and there are guys on the heat that are battling through stuff. So it's, you know, this is how the game is. Sometimes the ball doesn't roll your way, um, but we'll, we'll regroup and we'll, we'll be back next year. Malcolm, everybody talks about how great this locker room is. You've been around. You know how rare it is to get a, a great locker room. How how can you? I, I guess guarantee might not be the best word, but how how can you carry that over and make sure that the locker room is the same next year? Because you know year to year that that that's hard to maintain. Uh, you know, it's a culture thing. Um, you know, I think top down. I think. The locker room has to be diversified. I think it has to have role guys that are willing to play their role, um, that are willing to sacrifice. It has to have your stars that are willing to be humble and that are willing to sacrifice at times. And then it has to have your leaders like Al Horford. Um, and it's hard to build a locker team, a, a locker room like that, to construct a roster like that. And we have it. As far as it being the same next year, you know, we got to keep the the same culture and the same you know sort of identity within the locker room. But as far as personnel, that's not the player's decision. So. Um, all we can control is who will be back and, and who's in that locker room and um, replicating that feel and that camaraderie that we had this year.